Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we will see Pop IMAP server settings, web mail service and configurations, and how to administer the mail enable server with web administration utility. So let's get started. Let's open the IMAP properties. Listening port, IMAP service listen on port 140. This is the default port. If you check this require SSL, this will enable the SSL encryption for the default port. Also, we can check this for opening an alternate port 993. This is a general practice IMAP listens on 993 port with the SSL support. And this setting will work if we enable SSL on the localhost server. Here we need to enable the default SSL. Otherwise, this option will not work. This is for unlimited number of client connections or we can specify maximum number of connection. Specifying a maximum number of connection may reduce server load by limiting the threads that IMAP can use. Timeout for connections in idle. If this setting is enabled and a client connection has not passed any command for this period of time, the connection will be dropped by the server. Inbound IP binding. Always bind the service to all available IP address or we can selectively bind on specific IP and we are not using IPv6 on the settings. Enable SSL or TLS support. This enables SSL and TLS support for the IMAP service. Allow client to log in using plain authentication. Enables plain authentication for this IMAP service. Force clients to log in securely over SSL. Users are required to use SSL or TLS to authenticate to IMAP service. And enforce mailbox quota. When users copy messages up to the server via IMAP, this will make sure that they do not exceed their quota and return an error message. Enable NTLM version 1 authentication. This will allow the server to accept requests from the client to use secure transmission for the authentication method. The client also has to be enabled to use this secure authentication. In Outlook, the feature is called SPA, secure password authentication. Enable CRAM MD5 authentication. This mechanism sends only a hash value of the password, thus avoids plain text transmission. Enable XList or special use folder support. This option allows the IMAP service to tell the email client what folders are the junk and deleted items. And on the login tab, enable logging. This is W3C logging. And on the advanced logging, this is activity and debug log if you want. We can enable from here. And under the IMAP service, we have the logs, activity debug and W3C logs. And from the connection, we can see the IMAP connectivity connection time, socket, client IP, everything will be shown here. Now let's open the pop service properties. On the pop properties, general settings, maximum concurrent connection. This is the number of concurrent connections from the mail client the server will allow. Alternate at the rate character for username. Some older mail client don't allow the use of at the rate sign in the username section. So this is for the old mail client systems. So we can leave it now. POP protocol, the port mail enable will allow client POP connection on. This is the default port. Normally, we do not use SSL on the default port. Also, listen on alternate port, 995 port. This is normally used with the SSL if you want SSL connection with the POP service. Enable a POP authentication. Normally, username and password for the POP authentication are sent in the clear text format but APOP use encryption. If we enable this, this will force clients to enable APOP authentication on the mail client. And the mail client must have supports for the APOP, otherwise they will not be able to receive mail. Enable NTLM version one authentication. This is secure authentication. In Outlook, this is called the SPA or secure password authentication. Enable CRAM MD5 authentication. To avoid clear text transmission, it will only send the hash value of the password. IP address connection restrictions. You can specify which IP address are allowed to connect to the POP service to receive any mail. This access list can specify who can connect to the POP service. We can deny all except the local subnet. And for remotely access, we can selectively allow the IPs from here. So we are by default denying all connection except this subnet. Inbound IP binding. Normally, it always binds the service to all available IP address, but we can selectively enable IP address for the POP service. Allow IPv6 client connectivity. We are not using IPv6 on our network. On the advanced tab, use alternate welcome messages. When a client system connects to the POP service, then the message will throw. 
inactive timeout if a connection is inactive for longer than this period then the connection will be closed allow concurrent mailbox access by default pop server only allow one connection to a mailbox at any time enabling this will allow multiple connection to the same mailbox and on the logging tab enabling w3c logging activity log and debug log we can see all the logs from here whenever client systems connects and download emails we can trace all the connectivity from here you can see user anthony logged in from ip so it will show the details now let's open the web administration properties on the web admin properties it says the web administration option are configured on a post office level and it shows the site configuration we already shown you how to configure the website for the web administration on the post office we need to enable the web administration here web admin we have enabled it earlier now if you want to log into the web administration utility we need to go to the web admin this is the url we set for the web administration on the iis server here if you see the web admin and you can see the bindings here the web admin dot optimus dot com i already showed you the configuration how to configure the iis so let's log into the web administration utility this is the welcome page and we can create mailbox from here add new groups we can add groups lists domains dcam configuration branding imap activity monitor pop activity monitor smtp inbound smtp outbound log files on the web admin utility we have very limited option here on the standard edition so let's go to the webmail configuration so open the webmail properties on the webmail properties this is the general tab webmail option these are the options we can enable from here and user will see this option on the webmail when he logged in so user can add redirection user can configure autoresponder calendaring tasks let's enable everything these are the webmail options and i already showed you how to configure the webmail site on the iis so we're not showing you right now on the spam tab report as a spam menu option user will be able to mark the mail as a spam and the action will be move message to junk folder we can specify here which will be the global spam folder logging webmail logging creates a log file in your mail enable logging directory so this is the logging directory and the logging status either we can log to debug log or log to windows event log file upload size this is the maximum size we can upload on the webmail as the attachment server configuration screen webmail anonymous user sign up we are not enabling this sms via exchange active syncs user can send sms via eas and these services are available in very limited in standard edition so click ok let's log into the webmail webmail.optimus.com let's log in with the user2 this is the standard interface of webmail here contacts calendars tasks we can do the collaboration thing from here and on the option you can set your preference account setting regional setting login we can change password from here and we can enable autoresponder from here we can also enable email redirection if you want to redirect incoming mail to another email account and this is the email signature and on the advanced we can import mail from another mail server 
let's say I have another domain and I want to download my mail from my another mail server so I am downloading mail from user2 at mailserverguru.com and this mail will be merged with my inbox so let's click import okay now if we go to email we can see here 12 mail came and these are all from the user2 at mailserverguru.com so user2 of optimus is getting mail from user2 at mailserverguru.com so user2 at the rate optimus is importing his mail from another server so these are the options we have so this is it for today thank you for being with me and if you still didn't subscribe to my channel please subscribe it will encourage me a lot to create more videos for you so thank you and i'll see you on the next video bye